So I'm out here at Ryan's mom's. I took my winter sowing Roma tomatoes and planted them along here where the old peach tree was and it's just kind of like bit the dust. So it's going to come out eventually. But I figured it's better than nowhere. It's going to get sun here in the evening time and there's a bunch of wild strawberries growing around it to kind of give it a mulch ground barrier and it hasn't rained here for a while but the ground's still pretty moist. I think it's going to do pretty well. Um, I'm excited about that. I pulled up walking with his mom. We were out looking at all the fo uh, foliage and stuff. I pulled up a hardneck garlic back in here and I noticed the scape right back in here. And so I got to come back here to see if there's any other hardneck gar garlics. I, uh, the scapes weren't pulled and the garlic w clove was, uh, the bulb was smaller than the one I pulled up in my own garden. So I need to come out here and pull more scapes to, um, if there is any more garlic because yeah I want those bulbs to get big I want as much garlic as I can get so now I can grow garlic out here too which I will plan on planting that out in the fall that'll be exciting along everywhere around here she has raspberry bushes and I think they're a summer bearing because they're just now setting fruit and starting to ripen up and it goes all the way back around the property, all along the lines. But first, let's stop and talk about this. This is honeysuckle. They're beautiful. I found a Nanking cherry bush up by her house. And then back here, across from Rhubarb Hill, there is bamboo. And I had no idea we could grow bamboo in Indiana. But I'm going to show it to you. Check this out. No more buying steaks for me. That is bamboo. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's all back there too. So that's pretty stinking cool. And that limb fell down back yonder. So we're going to have to come back with a chainsaw and probably hazmat suits because God knows that there's poison ivy or poison oak. Uh, and get that taken care of in some of the dead trees around here. Yeah, that's where the we ran out of gas this past weekend and I'm sure there's other edibles around here that I have yet to find because when Ryan's grandma was still alive she would plant and plant and plant hence rhubarb hill <laughs> so I uh, hope you enjoyed a little tour of her home the back 20 anyway for you the Shasta daisies the pink ladies and then she has some black-eyed Susans popping up right there they're sh in a shadier spot so they didn't um, bloom as quick as mine did. The Shasta daisies look beautiful. That's a whole wisteria bush that is, or tree that is growing up over the arch trellis there. And this is where I found the Nanking cherry bush. It's right in here. And I only found one, so I couldn't even sit there and pinpoint out the leaves at this point, which one's which. And there's something else I wanted to show. I was using my plant identifier app because I wanted to know what this crazy flower was. And you know what that is? Wild garlic going to bloom, going to seed. Isn't that a cute? That is cool. Wild garlic looks awesome, even as a floral um, plant. So that's really neat. All right, it's the next day, and I'm out here along the A-frame trellis, and I'm going to plant Abby's butternut squash uh, that she sent me that I started in the cow pots right along here on the A-frame trellis. After I weed, of course. There's prickly lettuce right here that needs to come out. Everything else is pretty much dry, but that's my plan. I'm going to take care of that and I'm going to sow some more seeds and do some watering tonight and harvesting more peas because I got peas every day and that's great. So I'm going to harvest while there's good harvest on the peas. Um, so yeah. Ooh, look, I'm getting shoulders on my carrots. They're getting to be a pretty decent side. They'll be ready to harvest before long. That's exciting. Then I could pluck those out and slap some more seeds in. Don't know what I'm going to plant there yet, but I'll figure something out. So it's funny. I used to think that prickly lettuce was crabgrass. I guess that's what I've always been told it was, but it is not. It is prickly lettuce. And I'm sure it as well has medicinal properties, but I'm not aware of it yet. I like to take my garden spade, oops, threw that in one of the containers, Keely's going to plant in. Um, 
like to take my garden spade and get really deep down underneath that root system and get it out. And this other stuff can just go. I grew spaghetti squash along this uh, A-frame trellis last year, and um, I didn't understand that spaghetti uh, spaghetti squash like bushes out more than it creates a long vine like melons and things do. So it didn't work out as planned, but it still did. It still ran up it a little bit, and I got spaghetti squash off of it, so it wasn't a total failure. It just wasn't the ideal spot for it to grow. It would rather have a cage around it than grow up a trellis. I gotta be very careful around this chicken wire though because I was pulling out a weed on the other side and the cut edges of the chicken wire actually poked into my arm like right here and went about a half inch in, and that hurt. <laughs> it did, and it was sore for a couple days. I do need to pull off these bottom leaves. They, they're done. And the reason why you want to pull off the bottom leaves is that way the plant doesn't spend energy trying to make those uh, continue to grow, that it focuses on new growth. I should have brought my utility knife out or scissors or something so I could cut holes around here. I guess I'll have to come back and do that. But yeah, um, I was researching butternut squash and it likes to vine up over trellises and stuff so I figured this will be a nice little trellising system for it because I got the A-frame right next to the uh, rabbit fencing. That way it could go uh, up and over the A-frame and then up the rabbit fencing if needed. I got to give the garden a good watering tonight. We watered a couple nights ago, two nights in a row, but it just didn't water deep enough. Uh, some of the plants out there are starting to wilt. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and water again tonight just to play it safe. Although there is moisture still in the ground, so maybe I shouldn't worry about it. Maybe it's just stress from something else. I'll go check other areas in the garden and see how moist they are and then decide from there. the simplicity of these cow pots just so you know I love the fact that I could just um, take them and bury them in the ground they hold moisture better than those peat pots I have this is the first peat pots I ever have so I don't really have an opinion on peat pots in general at this point but I do like these cow pots more than the peat pots that I did buy and I like the fact that it's also adding um, composted cow manure into my soil on top of it um, so that's my takeaway from those experiences this year I think on this side of the arch trellis where I planted the Chicago pickling uh, cucumbers is where I'm going to plant the dill. You see I have a lot of weeds growing back the grass, so I'm going to go take the hoe after it first and then sow my dill. I made a mistake and when I was uh, clearing out the weeds and whatnot, I took up my nasturtium planted there. So I grabbed my seeds of change dill. Uh, I bought that at Rural King the time I bought those pelleted Roma tomatoes. And I also grabbed some zinnias. They're not gales, but I don't know how big those are going to get. So I got a cut and come again mix. I also have some giants and some of those white polar zinnias from Baker Creek. 
Um, so I'm still gonna plant gales, just I need to, I think I better put hers in a container, that way I can monitor that better. Um, because my winter sowing stuff, the, those flowers just aren't coming up. Those are my calendulas, and I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I need to research it a bit more. Anyway, and then I figured since we're on an arch trellis, why not plant some morning glories? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going a little bit above and beyond here what I had set out to do. That's all right, though. Let her grow. So I want to plant out my dark purple oval basil, okay? But I have a predicament. We're supposed to plant basil with tomatoes, right? Well, look at that. I don't have the space for it. And some of my peppers look a little uh, stressed out. But I checked the soil and everything's still pretty damp, so I just can't worry about it. Anyway, I'm still I still got ashwagandha seed sprouts growing. Um, that tray is out at my grandma's house because I gave my mom my, some of my bell peppers and whatnot to plant out for the collaboration garden I got going on over there. And so I'm wondering if I have more ashwagandha growing, all right, I told her she could plant them out there at, the, at that house if she wants to, or I could take them back and plant them out here. But let's just say for a second, I get those plants back. I want to plant them along here, right? Would I also, do you think I would also have room to plant basil right here on the inside near the, um, yeah, landscape fabric? Or should I just go ahead and plant it in container? I want to hear what you guys think down in the comments before I actually do this. So I just want to thank you for stopping by and let you know I love you and so does Jesus. God bless.